Everybody's raving about this Slammiversary show. Fans are telling me that it was a really good show. I decided to look up the card, get all the matches, get all the stories behind it, and watch the show. And by the end of it, hmm, I actually enjoyed that. Yeah, that that was a good show. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Impact Wrestling put on a good show. And people have been telling me they've been putting on good shows for a while now. And the good thing about this show is that I didn't have to go back and watch certain episodes to be caught up. Because the production crew was kind enough to recap me throughout the show. Amazing. Amazing video packages highlighting the characters, highlighting the matches, the feuds, to get me caught up. Now, I know some of you purists would rather me watch the show on a weekly basis and be caught up. But sometimes we don't got time for that. It's very kind when the wrestling companies do it for me. And I thank them for that. Let's just start from the beginning. Commentary was Josh Matthews and Don Callis. I thought him and Don worked very well on commentary. At the very least, they weren't distracting me from the matches. So we kicked things off with an amazing, amazing Fatal 4-Way. Check this out. P.D. Williams versus Phoenix versus Taiji Ishimori. And Johnny Impact. Think about this. We got Petey Williams, who is a TNA Impact Wrestling homegrown talent through and through. We got Phoenix, Lucha Underground. Taji Ishimori, New Japan. And Johnny Impact, who, let's be real, WWE. So think about it that way. It's pretty cool. WWE guy versus Japan guy versus Lucha Underground guy versus TNA guy. This match was fantastic. If you are a fan of high-flying, innovative action, this is the match for you. My mouth was on the floor with how good this match was. How the hell did anybody manage to follow this? MVP of the match goes to Phoenix. Phoenix is the man. He is a freaking beast. Not taking away from Petey, Taji, or Johnny, because all four of them were awesome. Phoenix was the star in the match. And of course we had Johnny Impact win, which is the right person to go over. He is, to me, the main event player of the four. You can argue that any one of those guys could have main evented. Hell, this entire match could have been the main event. Because this was, this was hard to follow. I was very pleased with that opening contest. And I think a lot of fans will agree with me. Tessa Blanchard versus Allie. Now, I know nothing about Allie. I've seen her maybe once or twice. I think she was Cherry Bomb, if I'm not mistaken. That was her last wrestling name. Well, she's Allie now. I can't really criticize her too much. Tessa Blanchard, I know a lot about her, and she's freaking amazing, and I'm pissed off that NXT let her slip by. Yeah, I know she's the daughter of Tully Blanchard, which is a plus, but even if she wasn't the daughter of a legend... Come on, she's freaking awesome. She has all the tools to be a women's champion wherever she wants to be. And I'm actually very shocked they let her go or let her slip through the cracks and they didn't sign her. And now she's a part of Impact Wrestling. Impact put the belt on her immediately. Because I saw that women's championship match. We'll get to that in just a second. But come on, hell no. This should have been the women's championship match, honestly, <laughs> in comparison. Tessa Blanchard needs to be your women's champion soon. At least by Bound for Glory. If not at Bound for Glory. Uh, the match itself... Uh, this match suffered from following that opening contest. It wasn't... It wasn't bad. I don't think either one of these women did a bad job. When I hear a two-time women's champion... I expect better. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, this girl has won the championship twice. Twice. The fact that I don't really get much out of her as a performer, that's not really a good thing. Clearly this company has put a lot of stock into her. And I would expect more from someone that has that much stock. Now, again, this is coming from someone who is completely ignorant of Ali, And I admit that. And I'm not going to criticize her too much. I'm not saying the match was bad. All I'm saying is, from, what is this? 
my second impression of her. The first one being when they did the whole Impact Wrestling versus Lucha Underground ordeal, and I wasn't impressed with her then. I don't really get it. Maybe you can help me understand. But anyways, Tessa won, as she should have, because she should be the next women's champion. And that was what it was. House of Hardcore, Tommy Dreamer versus Eddie Edwards. So the story behind Eddie Edwards' recent transformation ties back to that incident where Sammy Callahan busted his eye with an aluminum, aluminum, I can say that properly, aluminum baseball bat. Yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen, but the fact that we made use of that... That's pretty cool. And basically, he came back as a demented psychopath obsessed with vengeance and killing Sammy Callahan. I like it. I like it a lot. Even after he apparently beat him in a match, he still wanted to get him. He still wanted to kill him. That's pretty hardcore. It got to the point where Tommy Dreamer tried to stop him because he remembers his feud with Raven. And he said, I wasted three years of my life trying to end a feud. Don't fall into the same dark spiral that I did. And Eddie Edwards didn't listen to him. And he just fell deeper and deeper and deeper into insanity. And the more time went by, the more crazy he became. And it got to the point that he hunted down Sammy Callahan and tried to kill him. Literally tried to kill him. And then he just got so crazy that he looked in the mirror one day and saw Sammy Callahan. Which I was like, look, that's cheesy as hell, but I still like it. And then the whole ordeal with him thinking Tommy Dreamer was sleeping with his wife. Just a lot of craziness, but the hype for this match, mwah, amazing, remarkable. Unfortunately, the match did not live up to the level of the story, which is kind of lame because I feel like this could have been a really good match. We started off good. You had the staple gun. You had the tables. You had the chairs. There was blood. I like where it was going. And then it got to a point in the match where Tommy Dreamer attempted or teased, really, setting a table on fire. He brought the table in the ring, doused it in gasoline, had the match, and Eddie Lowe blows him and hits him with a shining wizard and beats him. Okay. And then after the match, I'm thinking, okay, maybe he might put him through a table now. Nope. Eddie Edwards just breaks down. He just has a mental breakdown and starts crying. And then he starts calling to Tommy Dreamer. Dreamer! Dreamer, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then Dreamer shakes his hand, gives him a hug, and then gives him his Kindle stick. And that was it. That That's your blow-off? You had this guy go on this downward spiral and... This is where it led? So is he back to normal now? Because I wouldn't like that. I like this Eddie Edwards. I like the demented, crazy, off his rockers. If you get in my way, I will kill you. Eddie Edwards, I think that's the best Eddie Edwards I've seen. And if he goes back to boring Eddie Edwards, I'm not going to like it. I'm very worried about that. You did this awesome story, and you're going to end it like this. I hope this isn't the end of it. Don't let this be the end of it, please. Anyways, moving on. We have an X Division Championship match between Matt Seidel and Brian Cage. Now, Matt Seidel apparently is a heel champion, which is new to me. Let me get this straight. He's this spiritual, enlightenment, third eye, holistic personality. I'm not too sure what to call it. But he does this whole, I got the third eye, and he's cocky, and he's cutting promos now, which are actually pretty good. I remember when his promos used to suck. To my surprise, this is actually the best work he's done on the stick. And I think this gimmick is the reason for that. Now, I heard this whole spiritual gimmick is actually tied to his real life because he's a very spiritual being, which I love. I love it when gimmicks actually tie into their real personalities because that's what makes it work. But because he was able to get this gimmick, his character has been able to shine a lot more. And I got to say, I've never been more interested in Matt Seidel than I am now. I really like this gimmick. I know how a lot of people hate it. I love it. I think it's great. What I don't like, and this needs to be said, is the fact that he is limiting his in-ring ability. Because he's trying to make his character shine a little bit more. And look, I get it. 
He's a heel. He's not supposed to be liked. You're not supposed to get behind him. But damn it, man. I I get it, but what the hell? I feel like with this spiritual gimmick, but man, I feel like he would be a lot more cooler if you just mixed the spiritual gimmick with his in-ring ability. Like the crazy high-flying stuff, that would make a lot more sense with this holistic character. That's just me. So eventually when he becomes maybe more of a tweener or more of a baby face, if you will, you're going to see this gimmick start to really shine. And I think people will like it more too. And I think that's the reason why fans didn't really like this match all that much because I read on Twitter people weren't pleased with this match. I thought it was solid. With what they're doing and what they did, I didn't think it was bad. I actually liked it. What I didn't like was that shooting star press at the end. I don't know what the hell that was. He jumped, did a flip, and then came down on the turnbuckle. And he hit Brian Cage's foot, but it looked like he almost killed himself. Yeah, I don't know what that was. Don't do it again. Regardless, Brian Cage is your new X Division champion. And I'm going to assume he's the new Samoa Joe of that division. You know, a guy that's supposed to be heavyweight competing in the X Division. I'm cool with that. I have no issues with that. We got an Austin Aries promo. This guy is stacking on them golds. I saw that video package of him carrying like 10, 20 gold straps around his body. Which, let me just say this. Austin Aries leaving the WWE. Now, I don't remember if he got released or he asked for his release. Regardless, I'm happy he left because he's doing some good things right now in the indie circuit. We got this knockout championship match. Uh, Sue Young, who's this undead bride or undead princess, and she has the power of the Undertaker, apparently. She can raise the dead and do all kinds of evil, demonic stuff. And she's taking on, of all freaking people, Madison Rain. I never liked Madison Rain. I still don't like Madison Rain. Didn't like her in 2009. Don't like her in 2018. Why did she, of all people, get a championship match? When Tessa freaking Blanchard was on the show. Now, I don't know what the story was or is behind Madison Rain's return, but really, this woman is a six-time knockout champion. She don't need the belt no more. How's about we get some new women in that title picture, please? Thanks. Moving on to a street fight. 5150 street fight. LAX. Well, how do I put this? It is LAX, but it's a new gen LAX with Conan taking on the old gen. Calling themselves the OGs. And they're with Eddie Kingston. There's this whole story with Eddie Kingston betraying Conan and... Him enlisting the help of the OGs because the OGs feel disrespected or betrayed by Conan. And look, I was just happy to see the old LAX again. I don't know how to feel about Ortiz and Santana. I don't hate them. They're pretty good. But compared to Homicide and Hernandez, I'm always going to go with the OGs. So, it was weird for me seeing Conan against his old buddies, but that's the story they're telling. The match was good. Crazy spots. LAX wins when <laughs> they threw Homicide on some thumbtacks and then did a freaking flash. It was pretty cool. Although Hernandez didn't sell it, he just got right back up and <laughs> beat him after they won the match. So, they tag the belts with OG and basically tell them, it ain't over with. We coming for you. And then we got the two final matches. Hair versus Mask, Pentagon Jr. versus Sammy Callahan. Oh my goodness. This was violent as hell. And I loved it. Ain't it crazy that the best matches on this show just so happen to involve people from Lucha Underground? I'm just saying. But regardless, this was freaking fantastic. Match of the night. My favorite match. Now, if I'm being objective, I feel like the first match and this match were on par. So if you want to say the first match was the best match, go for it. This was my favorite match. I loved everything about this. I love the slaps of the chest. I love the selling. I love the craziness going on with Sammy Callahan and the drools. And I love Pentagon Jr. Big fan. Cerro Miedo. I loved everything about this. Even the spikes. As gruesome as it was to watch. I loved it. I even loved the spot where Pentagon Jr. had a bat. It was going to nail the spike into Callahan's head. And then he missed him in the eye. 
Retribution for Eddie Edwards, bitch. And then he did it again and actually hit him with it. It was gruesome and I loved it. And then it was a spot when they were just jamming each other in the head with the spikes. Oh my god! So good! It ends with, of course, Pentagon Jr. doing a freaking pile driver on some steel chairs, which Callahan kicked out of, but then he broke his arm, Lucha style, and then did another pile driver to pin him one, two, three. Callahan tried to run. Phoenix came out, stopped him, and then he got his head shaved, because that was a stipulation. It is what it is. To me, he looks no different. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's cool with having no hair. He'll probably grow back. It looks like it will grow back fast, too. But the main event, Impact Wrestling World Championship. Austin Aries, your champion, the guy stacked in gold, taking on Moose. It's not to mock Moose. I feel like he's improved a lot. A bunch since the last time I watched him. And I gotta say, I loved when Austin was chopping Moose and he went, Moose! Moose! I don't know what it was about that, but... I thought that was great. Moose. But let me just say this. On paper, I thought this was not going to work. No offense to Austin or Moose. I was very worried with this match going on last. Knowing that Pentagon Jr. and Sammy Callahan was on this card. Plus that Fatal 4 away. And then that House of Hardcore match which didn't live up to standards. Regardless, I felt like when you look at the rest of the card and you have this match on last... It was not going to live up. And then I saw the match, and I loved it. It was a great match. What the hell is wrong with me? This is Moose's best match. I have not seen Moose have a better match than this. And Moose deserves credit. Because he went in there and did some crazy stuff. He looked really good against Austin Aries and surpassed my expectations. That's all I got to say. Great main event. Austin Aries retains, as he should, because, yeah, he should be your champion. He's freaking amazing. And there you go. That was Slammiversary. I thought it was a really good show. The best TNA Impact show I've seen in a long time. And that's saying a lot. Because I don't usually like TNA shows. And let me just say this. When your boy Deluxe Man is giving praise to a TNA slash Impact show, you know it's good. Go out of your way to see it. I recommend it. Uh, is it one of the best shows this year? Yeah, it's... Yeah. Yeah, good job everybody. So with that said, because I like this so much, I will be watching Bound for Glory. Congratulations, Impact. You got yourself a watcher. Now, I won't be watching weekly. Not yet. I'm not there yet. My trust isn't fully into Impact to where I could watch it on a weekly basis. But you do have me for Bound for Glory. And I will be watching it live. So put on a good show. With that said, thank you for watching. Give me your thoughts about this show down below. What was your favorite match? And just give me whatever's on your mind down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching. This is your boy, Deluxe Man, signing off right here in Deluxe Man's World. I'll see you next time for more Impact Wrestling. Moose! <laughs>